Hey folks, and welcome to The Michael Rollins Show. We're talking again with Justin Skinner. And if there's one thing I would call Justin Skinner, it is not only an elite racer, it is also a social media genius. Now, Justin would not agree with either one of those statements, but it's my show. So I'm gonna tell him that's what he is, and he's gonna like it, and there's nothing he can do about it. But I've got a question for you. If you're starting an Instagram account, what is the single most important thing you can do with that Instagram account to make it grow? Another question I have for you is, do you think that you could be an elite racer like Justin? And better yet, do you think you could beat Justin? Because the field is competitive and he is good. I really like making this show. It's actually one of the things I look forward to on a regular basis is interviewing these people that I get to talk to. In order to support that, I've started a Patreon. And that Patreon has a $3 podcast tier. And what that podcast tier gets you is all of these episodes plus extra footage condensed into one audio format, which is available to you through Patreon as a podcast. I would like to ask you to partner with me in being a part of that Patreon. It helps support this show. It helps with the cost of making this show because the equipment for cameras, the equipment for things for filming, the programs that I use are not free, quite frankly. And I would like to make the show better. Maybe one day travel, do a lot of crazy things, uh, go to my interviewees as opposed to just doing it over Skype. There's all kinds of things that we could do if we could turn this into a business. That's beside the point. If you're interested in an audio only, podcast version of everything that I do, then my $3 Patreon tier is just for you. I hope that you will partner with me because it would be pretty awesome. The link to Justin's YouTube as well as my Patreon is in the description below and I will talk to you soon. Bye. I, I will say that you in particular and, and I get and Nick too, but you definitely um, were really good at the social media game. Um, it, it seemed like I couldn't, I couldn't open up Instagram. I couldn't go on to Facebook without running into something that y'all had posted. Well, and I mean, that just means I'm a social media whore. I'm just all over the place. <laughs> no, man, but you're, you're like, you whore you're yourself actually, out, you're good at it. You, you're, but you're good at it. Like, tell, tell me a little bit about why, like why, why, and uh, you backed off a whole lot since then. Um, and, and it wasn't like, it, and just so we're clear, it wasn't like, it's like sometimes like people would see my videos when I first was getting started, they'd be like, God, this guy again, like he's, he's posting another video to every single group that he's a member of. And it used to drive people crazy. It would piss people off. And I, I've totally backed off that. I don't do it anymore. Um, but you had a great way of capturing people's attention you know, you'd, you'd post some flight clip and then you'd have something at the bottom and then you'd always have this bevy of hashtags. Yeah. Especially on Instagram. That, that's where, that's where I think you, you shine. So t talk to me a little bit about like, what's your, what at the time was your social media, um, approach? Oh, well, you know, I started it right off the bat. Like soon as I decided that I was getting into the hobby, I started one and I mean, you can, Really, it starts off as a, I still think of it as a micro journal kind of mm -hmm. deal, um, especially Instagram. So like I post on other social media platforms too, but Instagram's always kind of had my heart. Uh, it's just, it's a way, it's a place for me to share a small snippet of my thoughts and, and experiences and the journey that I was, I was going, I was joining, you know, there was, there was already a small community at the time. I mean, it was very small back then. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and everyone was kind of at a level playing ground. And so I, I'm not sure about you, but for me, it's always nice to see others' growth and progress and potential yes. and, this, and, and to learn from them. I like learning from others' experiences. Um, and so when I started it, I started just with my experiences. This, this was, Instagram was a way for me to track my journey through FPV. And mm -hmm. I've always kind of had a tendency to uh maybe maybe coach or teach you know help mm -hmm. others try to help others it's kind of always something i i do um 
online, offline, you know, if you meet me in person and I see something that I can help you improve, I'll, I'll mention it. Um, and sometimes people don't like that. Some people do. Uh, I definitely annoy, annoy quite a pe- quite a few people I've met throughout life. Uh, I've annoyed with that, but it seems to work really well online, um, especially you know Instagram. If you're you're sharing your knowledge that helps somebody else solve their problems or get better or motivate them, mm-hmm. um, and so I kind of always in the back of my mind was keeping that a focus. You know, not not just the post to necessarily show off what I was doing, but to, you know, use that caption that, that, you know, it was like a thousand characters at the time and maybe still a thousand, I'm not sure, but use that thousand characters that uh, Instagram allowed me to share something that helped somebody. And it, that really, I think resonated with people, especially back then, especially back then, like right now, the growth, the growth rate on Instagram is dead slow. Um, as far as, as where I'm at, because I, if if they're into FPV, they're probably following me on Instagram at this mm-hmm. point. Just because I show up, you know, if you follow somebody else, I'm going to show up as a recommended following, uh, just because so many of others that follow that account are following mm-hmm. me as well, and so it's likely that they're following me. Now, if I'm doing a good job now compared to back then, probably not. Um, I've definitely the past, I would say. Uh, for we we are in month seven, so eight nine. Last nine months, I really let off the Instagram and social media game, um, just because of like I was saying with Nito, life life happens. There's things yeah. that you have to focus on. Um, but back then, that was that's all I ever tried to do is help people and, and also track my progress. Like I have a, I have a hashtag. Uh, it will be fun race. That mm-hmm. is, I've tagged every single race I've gone to and I posted a clip. I've tagged it that. Because I wanted to be able to go back through all my footage and see the progression over the time. So that's that's my favorite thing about Instagram is it's all uh, uh, what is it Chron- chronological. It's all yeah. chronological. So you can literally see my journey from the very beginning. I can go back. I'm no one else does it. I mean, who, who's going to spend that much time going back? But I do. I go back every once in a while and, and, and just, uh, gauge my progress from like last year even. You know, mm-hmm. and it's fun and. You know, other people kind of connected with that and they followed along and it's funny though you see a lot of people now you heard a lot of conversations about how everyone has FPV in their names and a big a big part of that I think is because of me at the beginning um, and that's kind of cool I feel like I've influenced at least the Did initial that really season. come from I you? I don't know if I was the first one but I've yeah, there's a bunch of people that told me, you know, that they've done that. Oh so, my gosh! I, so, <laughs> so that's one of those. When, when that's I see one those conversations, those... when I see those conversations in like Facebook groups and stuff like that, I just kind of have a little giggle. Because no one's that, gonna really God. know now where the where it started, but that is hysterical. Because I I have always wondered where that came from. Because I mean, obviously, it's like a discovery mechanism to a degree. Um, well, yeah, because when you search, when you're, when you're viewing them. On Instagram, you don't know if they just say their name, what they count right. about, but you say FPV connects with those that audience right away. Yeah, and I think there's, I think that like Mr. Steel, I'm not sure actually if he has FPV in the name. Um, he may have at one point, but I don't think he does anymore. Yeah, like, and that's random, probably for him, because he's he's big time yeah. famous. Yeah. Um, here, let's look him up real quick. Let's see. Uh, Mr. Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve. <laughs> no, he still has it. It's still Mr. So Steel FPV. Oh, yeah, he may, he may have been the first, actually. Okay. Uh, he's, uh, yeah, it's not Mr. Steve, apparently. Um, yeah, because he was one of the yeah. first ones I remember following, and, like, we had those 15-second clips you could post at the time, and yep. all yeah, that be, was a long time all ago. All it was, like, a line of him just going through this, like, all these small gaps in one straight line, and yeah. Time. So now that's nothing today, but back then, man, that was that was the best. So, uh, tell me about your flying nowadays. What, like, what it, what, how much do you get to fly? Um, how, what kind of flying do you prefer to do? Like, you know, you started out with the Nito thing. You you built and prototype drones. Like, where is where is Justin Skinner flying now? Not enough. 
Justin Skinner okay. is not flying enough. Um, mostly when I fly, it's honestly the simulator nowadays. Um, I probably get a few hours a week in on the simulator, and it's all race practice. It's all race focus, mm -hmm. really. Um, mm -hmm. When I fly in real life, it's mostly just goofing off, um, flying around like the, like the good old days when you, when you first started off. The whole first year of me flying was me just goofing off wherever I was at with round pool obstacles. Um, but now, you know, like I have had to focus the past two years on racing and with goals of, you know, making it into the top elite level of racers. And uh, so usually when I fly, it's, it's a focus on that and uh, not so much anything else. Like I'll put in probably this year alone, I've only probably, I put in, so we're seven months in, almost eight months in, and I've flown maybe, shoot, 25% of the amount I would have flown by at this time last year. Wow. Uh, and that's just because of work, you know, yeah. it takes yeah. up more time. Um, I don't have as much daytime. I used to work from home mainly, so I would do my work and then I'd go out and fly. Uh, cause I've always lived somewhere where I had quick access, like right out back to fly. Um, I still do, but I don't work from home now. So I'm out in the field, um, and just don't have that time. So most of my flying now is at races or on the simulator. Okay. And have, how how have you placed yourself into that elite level of pilot yet? In my mind, not quite. Uh, okay. I know I know if I was to say that, like at my local races and stuff like that, people would scoff at me, just because you know I, I usually I'm near the podium or on the podium. Um, but when you go to like big events, like so, I'm not even sure where I placed at I O. That's a big event. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't do very well. Uh, I, I probably placed in the 40s or 50s. Uh, mm -hmm. Nationals, the past two years, I placed 31st and 32nd. Um, I, I always considered the top 16 to be the elite level. Um, mm -hmm. It just depends on what your, your definition of elite level is. Uh, I, I, think the, I think I can get those speeds at times as those elite level pilots, but it really comes down to your race um, skills, your, your racing mentality and how you perform under pressure. And I think that's what makes you an elite racer um, is you don't have to necessarily be the fastest, but you have to be the most prepared or, or the most mentally uh, focused mm -hmm. to handle the pressure and be strategic and not cave under pressure. And you really only get there through natural ability or going to a lot more events and unfortunately it's just not easy to go to a lot of high level events um, mm -hmm. because they're all across the world at this point we don't have you know everyone coming to dallas if everyone came to dallas for high level events i would have a lot of practice i'd be probably a lot better so it's all about finding out but, right now my goal right now is to figure out how to get that kind of practice under pressure that's my goal right now but it's not like you're, I mean, you're in Dallas, dude. I know some of the guys you fly with. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're not flying with a bunch of slouches. No, no. Mm -mm. I mean, no, you've, uh, you've got, isn't Vanover out there? You've got Ivan and Diastro. Well, you just named two irrelevant people. So Vanover is on a league of his own. He's, he's next level. <laughs> if, he's, if, he's in, if he's in the competition, I don't even consider that a possible spot to get. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I, he, he puts zero pressure on me. He can be in my seat and I don't even sweat him. As soon as we, you hear the start buzzer, he's already a lap ahead of me. Um, <laughs> he, he's that good. Uh, in the Astro, he doesn't race anymore. Um, okay. So in Dallas, we have, you know, Austin uh, and mm -hmm. uh, Dabs. Um, so Philip and, and Austin. And and Sam Bone and we got a few guys. You know, we got uh, I think it's a 16 year old who I swear in the next six months, if he wants it, he's going to be top level. And then, but we have a lot of races. We have we have, I think we have one of the best chapters, if not the best chapter in the nation, yeah. um, with Dallas Drone Racing. Um, the just the level of events they hold and and the quality that they they do with their events is amazing. And so 
Um, we get guys coming up from Houston and Austin. You know, we have Gil down in Austin. You know, he's always been, an, I, I would consider, an elite level racer. He's been on DRL. He's been, you know, what was it, number two nationals a few years back and top 16 this past year. Then we have uh, Ivan Lamone, who is just smashing um, at, at races. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good guys around here. And they mm -hmm. all come together. And so when they all come up here for the events, then that's when – you know, it's really on. That's when I feel the pressure. And mm -hmm. like we had an event, uh, our first night race for this new mission series that's going to go on for seven races. They came up for that event, and uh, I did have some trouble in, in the finals, uh, A mains finals, going up against them. Like I, uh, I, I missed a turn on a flag, had to turn around. I gave up first place on that heat, and then it's we get to win twice. You have to win first place twice to win the whole thing, and uh, and they just they kept it together under pressure. Where you know I had mental slips, and or at that point I was having uh, lipo issues. At that point, I killed a lipo. Mm. Um, but I'm excited for them. I'm excited for this series because I'm looking forward to all the practice I get against these racers because they're all right there at that same level of me. And so I'm hoping it'll help me going forward. That's the goal. Well, that's it, folks. That's all for Justin Skinner. It was truly an awesome time. And, you know, there's some people that you talk to where you get onto camera and you're a little bit nervous. And then there's some people you get onto camera with and it's just, it's like talking to an old friend. And Justin was like talking to an old friend. I have a feeling that Justin and I could sit down and shoot the breeze for quite a long time. Um, I respect them. I like them. And I like to hang out with them. So that's something to be said. At any rate, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I hope that Justin gets a little bit of love out of this. And uh, remember, support him, support Flight One, who he flies for. And uh, I will talk with you all soon. Bye.